Hey there, friends. Welcome into another episode of the Story Real Podcast. Steve Stram here, my boy Al. What's up, dude? Enjoying the night, my friend. How are you? Yeah, dude. Same here, except I'm getting a little tired. So I am, uh, we are going to record a, what is hopefully will be a somewhat short episode, a little bit more of a personal update. You know, if you're interested in our lives, that's what this one's going to be about. So what's going on currently? Yeah, I think most people probably are not interested in our lives, but at least you and I can share updates with each other. Yeah, probably. And it gives us content for another week. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, but this is the story world podcast. And so we have stories. Our stories are in the world. And so we are going to share them. Yes. Yes. Go for All it, right. Steve. Take okay. it away. All right. Going down my list. So I have recently designed, uh, redesigned my business website. You've heard the story of the cobbler's kid who has no shoes. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. In the, in the early days of having an online business, you spend all of your time tweaking your website and not getting any business. At a certain point, that shifts and you start getting business. And if you do a good job, you start getting a lot of business. And then your website looks like it's from 1992. And that's particularly bad if you're a web designer. Um, but, and while I wouldn't say that mine necessarily went down to 1992, um, it definitely was not reflective of our, you know, our current brand, our current team, like the work that we're doing now and how we're working with clients. And I'm really proud of all of that. And I was definitely not proud of my website. And so as more people, thanks to some of the content marketing efforts we're doing or finding our website, I was mad or not mad, but I was upset because I felt like the job wasn't doing the job it should, or the website wasn't doing the job it should be of making the sale um, beyond the content. And so in the next few weeks, I'm, I'm hoping to see an actual uptick in sales volume as a result of, of, of what we did. So, um, that's number one for me, what's going on. Redesign the northmacservices.com website. And that was a hint to go check out northmacservices.com. If you happen to need a marketing hub website or a website that helps with an online course or learning management, come see northmacservices.com because we are the team for you. Okay. All right. Next thing for me is I'm getting better. I've been sick for a few weeks. Some of you guys know that. I've had my thumb issue where I got my thumb cut off, you know, not cut off, but like a big chunk taken out of it by a ceramic lug. And then the next couple of weeks after that were just a whirlwind of other stuff like fevers. And I'm pretty sure I found I had an electrolyte imbalance going on and uh, just, you know, a couple different sicknesses throughout that time period, two ER visits, all of this. I thought I was going to have to put you down, Steve. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, it was bad. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I I am feeling good. Um, you know, the Lord was gracious to bring me through all of that and um, help me mentally and emotionally through it as well. And so here we are. Like, I'm, I'm doing better. I'm getting ready for another exciting week of work and uh, get a, a little bit of a working vacation coming up this week that I'm excited to chat about a little bit in a minute. So um, it's good. I'm feeling a lot better and uh, glad to be um, six feet above instead of six feet under. <laughs> so 100%. Yes. Uh, next thing for me. So I am, uh, I've recently, of course, you guys know I love podcasts. So a few weeks ago, I started a podcast around my mentoring and coaching side of my business, which is called subscription web design. So um, I have a kind of a unique web design model that I've been using since 2015, where clients pay me on a month to month basis, um, starting out with an 18 month lease. They, they pay me on a month to month basis instead of just, you know, large thousands of dollar chunks of, uh, uh, you know, of, of cash, uh, because that can be very um, unstable. And I like stability. I value stability over anything else. So I do subscription web design and I never would have imagined in 2015 when I put my business model together, I never would have imagined that in 2022, I would be teaching it to other people. Um, and successfully. So, uh, people buy courses and mentorship packages with me and that's pretty cool. Um, and nearly all of that success that I've had so far with it has been based on a seriously, a single podcast interview that I did with my uh, web design coach and mentor um, from April 2021. So last year, April. So I, I basically rode that wave of, of success from just that one podcast episode. And I thought, oh, well, what if I had a weekly podcast that talked about this and got new people on board with it? I think it could do even better. So 
I started this subscription web design podcast and really, really be happy with the results of that so far. I've already got a, a good bit of listeners right out of the gate with it. And um, it's it's the way that the, the, the podcast is titled and all of that, it seems to show up um, you know, pretty, pretty high on the rankings if you're just searching for a, a new web design podcast to listen to. So that's really exciting. And I'm hoping to get a lot more new blood in there. Um, and, uh, people to buy my courses and, and mentorships to learn how to sell subscription web design. So it wasn't ever in my plan to teach other people how to do that, but my mentor told that's me cool. I should. And so <laughs> nice. I started and, um, and here we are. And contrary to something I said to Alex, you know, a few minutes ago, I apparently love creating more work for myself. Um, so that's what I've done. <laughs> Here we are. Um, at the same time, it's just so low friction in 2022 to yeah. like put out a podcast. Like it, it okay. is more work. It's more, it's more mental space, but physically and time-wise, I mean, it's honestly just another hour yeah. in the week that it takes. And it's like, yeah, if it ends up producing long-term income, then it's worth that. So absolutely. Um, all right. So I've got three more. I'll try to go kind of quick here, but uh, the next one is an update around the uh, other business that I have um, called buydemotracks.com. Now we, the site is live, although we haven't done like an official, like big push launch for it yet. We've kind of been wanting to get through this next upcoming uh, week, which actually, as you're listening to this, it will be last week uh, that I did mm. this. So um but uh, we'll we'll be going to Raleigh. Uh, we'll have gone to Raleigh, the <laughs> world, uh, the International Bluegrass <laughs> Music Association's Ooh, yeah. World of Bluegrass yeah. Festival, and so it's going to be really exciting. Um, uh, we're we're I think we're doing something really really unique and really special in the way that we're creating uh, relationships between songwriters and artists. I mean, it's it's really it you know it, I don't I don't have time obviously to explain exactly how this works but like in short we're making it possible for songwriters who they could be a complete nobody we're making it possible for us to be able to create a professional demo and pitch their song exactly to the artist that they have in mind and in fact the way that we've got our setup it could be that on the very demo like they they could actually pay for the artist that they have in mind to record their song mm -hmm. to sing on their demo um of the song and be directly exposed to it like that and that has not only happened but a person that um did that is actually made quite a hit with one of the songs so like it's That's happened cool. um and at the same time, we can we can give artists basically a tailored, handpicked list of professionally recorded demos of songs that were written with them in mind. And it's really incredible what we're doing. And um, so hopefully other people catch that vision as we're visiting with them um, at the IBMA World of Bluegrass as well. So uh, that's going to be an exciting thing. Um, Next one is just things are really firing on all fronts. And except, well, at least they were until I messed my thumb up. Um, but I was pumping out lots of new content. I was getting getting lots of writing done, lots of recording done, lots of video stuff done. And just with being sick these past few weeks, it's really slowed down a little bit. But I'm, I'm now feeling good again. This week's going to be another slow week because I'm going to be traveling. But week after next, I'm excited to get back into it, pumping out a lot of writing, a lot more videos, a lot more podcasts, and um, just flooding the internet with as much Steve Schramm as they can possibly <laughs> handle too much steve too much too much steve there's never too much steve uh, no, no, i don't never. think that's a thing so um and you know and just on that note it's kind of crazy like you know one of my newest students in the mentorship we were talking on the call the other day and i was telling her oh have you gone back and watched this like where i talked about this and she's like oh yeah i've watched everything I'm, I'm like, that is amazing. <laughs> steve guru <laughs> that is amazing to think that there are people just going back and binging your content no matter how uninteresting you think you are so mm -hmm. kind of crazy and my last one is just that my uh i some of you guys uh have heard me talk about keto and carnivore um from a dietary lifestyle perspective, uh, that is going well. I'm back into the 230s, which is great. I need to be in the 220s. I was kind of hoping to be there by now. But um, anyway, I'm 
I'm doing all the right things. Um, and with the exception of a cheat meal for our 10th anniversary uh, the other night, which is, I guess is its own little announcement. I've been married for over 10 years and it's been amazing. Um, had a little cheat meal at Carabas, um, mm -hmm. but didn't feel like I had to. And that's what was cool about it. I very carefully and intentionally made the decision. Um, and I'll just be honest, it wasn't even that. Like, it was good. Of course, it was good. But like, it wasn't that life changing. It wasn't like I'm now like, drowning and wishing I had Carabas every day or lots of sugar or whatever. Like I enjoyed my desserts and my bread and then that's it. And one thing I have not done, I have not had any soda. I have not had any soda in three weeks, I including, guess. Four. Including diet. Including diet. I have not had any soda at all for like four weeks. And so that helps with the bloating and yeah. just overall, you know, feeling better. So, so things are, things are going well. There's really not too much other than, you know, I mean, we're working on school schedules and stuff like that. I mean, there's always, you know, there's always frustrations in life, but for the most part, you know, things are, things are going well and I'm grateful for it. Awesome. So there, there's my update. God, things are going uh, well for you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you too. Excellent. Good work, Steve. Um, so yeah, update for me, uh, baby number two on the way coming November. So November should be a, yeah. uh, a fun month that might turn into a no shave November simply because I don't know where I'll find the time. Well, yeah. Where are you going to fit it in? Yeah. So, uh, uh, much to my wife's probably displeasure, I will be, uh, <laughs> maybe skipping the shaving in November. Um, uh, <laughs> so that's, that's coming soon. So that'll be, that'll be fun. Can, can, um, what, can you share the actual like due date or no? Because uh, uh, due date is, that, that de is, is December 4th due to some, um, just medical stuff. That's, um, yeah, due to some medical stuff, um, will probably be induced two or three weeks before that. Which well, works out pretty well. It'll be a, probably the week, maybe two weeks before Thanksgiving. Um, so just kind of naturally in the middle of the month, which is good for my uh, day job and just how everything works out. So um, that's kind of how it's the stars are aligning. Because cool, I, awesome. I read the stars every day just to make sure that my day is going to go well. Mm. Um, yeah. On the kind of business development side, I'm kind of where Steve was seven years ago, really just kind of starting out. I've been writing for a while, but as far as like really being serious about, um, about doing things my own way and doing things myself, I'm where Steve was about seven years ago. So I'm hoping, um, I have like a, maybe seven, seven to 10 year, you know, timeline where I'm hoping to be sitting where Steve is and, uh, doing my own thing and, uh, really enjoying life. Uh, um, you know, still busy, still, uh, creating work for myself. Uh, but, um, this weekend I was, I started, um, a couple of websites, uh, one for my video game development, which is kind of more of a hobby still, but I'm still chipping away at it and hoping that something turns up there. And then also, uh, the main thing, uh, my writing. So I will not give out the, uh, address to those yet, because if you went there, you would see very clearly that there has been no work put into those websites yet. <laughs> so those are recently made and also just kind of getting some social media stuff, mostly YouTube gets set up and playing around with some ideas to go along with that for creating content in the next couple months before I kind of officially release it just so there's actually content out there for people to view. So that's fun. Um, yeah. so that's on the business development side of things. I know Steve's excited about that. Oh, uh, yes. writing is going, um, extremely well. Um, just consistently writing and putting out the pages. I'm probably, I don't know exactly how big the book is going to be right yet. Um, but I think I'm probably somewhere around, around 10% of the way through my first draft. Um, and so it's around 50 page mark. I, I, I don't think the book will be below 400 pages. Um. Oh. Maybe around 200,000 words. I think that's how it, yeah, 200,000 words would be around 450, 500, 550 pages, something like that. Anyway, that's probably where it will land around. I don't know exactly where, but, um, so I'm around page 50 now and that's kind of where things are looking, but things are going really well with it. I have the, uh, the outline really solidified. I'm going chapter by chapter now, kind of in the middle of book towards the end and really laying it out. And each day I'm just writing ahead and, um, just really happy with uh, the progress with that. Um, and it's in the, it's very much in the fantasy, like genre or. Uh, yes. So without giving my grand schemes away. Um, yes, it is. Uh, yeah, it is in the, uh, sort of high fantasy genre. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. So I, I'm really looking forward to, uh, releasing it to everyone one day. 
Um, yeah. The thing with this is even when I'm done my first draft, who knows how long it'll be to get my second draft done. And then the third draft, then sending out to people to read and then fixing anything and then sending it out to some major publishers, see if they'll take it. And if not, deciding if I want to go through Amazon, which is probably what I will do. And so a lot of decisions to be made. So there's a long road to go. But the good thing is once I finally get this first book on a roll, then I'll be, say, working on the second draft with it while I'm also writing a first draft for my second book. And then it just kind of stacks. So after this little gap here, it will be more probably like a book a year. That'll be finishing up. So that'll be a consistent role. Um, I'm also looking at personal wikis to adopt. Uh, if you have any suggestions I'm up for, I tried wiki D pad, but I don't know. Just, it's kind of, it's not my flavor, I guess. Um, and so next one I'm going to try is Doku wiki and, um, that's supposed to be a really good one. Um, and so I'm looking to do that just because of all the names and history and keeping track of everything in my books it just it would be easier for me to have my own personal wiki to to keep track of all that so yeah like your word documents <laughs> so word. yeah, yeah. fun yeah. fact Brandon sanderson hi has a assistant i guess you call it who's i think pretty much sole job is to once sanderson's done writing a book the assistant goes to the book and updates brandon sanderson's personal wiki um, so he doesn't even update it himself. He has an assessment that's that for him. Yeah. So that's, that's next level. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. And then on a, uh, funner side, on the hobby side, my running is going well. I have my 5k, um, Thanksgiving morning. Then after that, I'll probably have a couple months off for, uh, just to kind of recoup and just kind of run my base level and then go through another 16 weeks of training for a half marathon, 13 miles next May. Um, and so diet's going really good with that, not eating, not as low of carbs as Steve, but, um, pretty low. And I'm mostly just sticking with a lot of meats and, and cheeses is mostly my diet, but, um, running's going well. I'm at the point, I still have seven weeks of hard training left and I am at my fitness level now that I was last year on race day so and i still got two more months to train so i'm excited to that's see awesome. how much i can improve between that time yeah that's really huge man very anyway cool. that's, that's exciting yeah that's great all update. my updates so yeah very good well um you know i think that's basically it that we wanted to share just kind of yeah. give you a little bit of insight into what's going on in our in our personal lives it's funny we were in a different context we were actually just talking about how for some reason people like you know to, to you know we're people, right? We're all dynamic and we have more than one thing going on a lot of times. And so you might like to know what's behind um, the, uh, you know, just talking about the stories and stuff. There's a lot more going on, to, you know, for us. So yeah, definitely. We appreciate everyone who's uh, listened to this episode and all our other episodes and uh, appreciate yeah. the support. If you're listening to us on YouTube, like the video and subscribe to us and uh, just keep, mm -hmm. keep on enjoying, enjoying the ride. Yeah, lots more to come. Um, so if you if you dig it, you know, leave a leave a, a review on your favorite uh, podcast app, and that way other people will see it and decide yeah. whether or not it's for them. And uh, some of them, some of the podcasting, you know, apps even take reviews into account with their algorithms and stuff that they could potentially surface it uh, for others who are looking for a show about stories. So it'd be great if you'd do that. We'd really really appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. See you next time.